What's up? So we are shooting a real estate video. Actually for my buddy, he's a good friend of mine, real estate agent as well. And this is his dad's cabin. So before we get started, I just wanna answer a question up front. People always ask me how much I charge for real estate videos and honestly just depends for this one. I'm charging around a thousand, mostly because he's a friend of mine. But typically I'll charge between 1,500 and 2,500 for a real estate video like this. Now a lot of people will tell me that they can't get their real estate agents to pay that much. And the problem usually is that they're going after real estate estate agents that aren't doing luxury listings. In other words, the house pricings, the listings that they're trying to sell them for aren't going for enough. And real estate agents only have a certain amount of marketing budget. And if the house isn't worth enough, they're not gonna spend very much on a video to promote that. So I always try and find houses that are at least in the millions of dollars, five to $10 million listings. This one's only a million dollar listing. So it's one of the uh, smaller ones I've done, but again, it's because it's for a friend of mine. Now, before every real estate video, I like to ask my client upfront, what are the main features you wanna make sure I capture? I always tell them I'm gonna film everything anyway, but I need to know upfront, is there anything specific you want me to feature? And in this case, he said, yeah, make sure that you capture the stream out there, get a shot going up the road up here. So always make sure you ask the client what they're looking for, what the selling points of the house are, and that way you make sure you capture everything. Now, as far as camera settings go, I honestly mix it up as I go. Um, each room is gonna be different, different lighting, different color temperatures. So I'll give you a little behind the scenes look at changing from room to room, color temperatures. I personally like to shoot everything at 60 frames per second and then slow it down to 24 in post, and that gives it a nice, super slow, buttery look look to the footage. That's just my personal preference. If it's too low of light, I will go down to 24 frames and then just move a little bit slower to try and match the rest of the footage. But 60 frames is my preference. As far as gear goes, we have our 1DX Mark II. Uh, lens is the Liowa 12 millimeter 2.8 zero distortion. What that means basically is there's no curving on the outside. So basically when you're passing by straight lines, they're not going to be curved like a fisheye, but they're gonna be straight lines. So that's what the zero distortion means. And we'll show some of those shots so you can see what it does, especially in very tight uh, spaces. And with real estate videos, you wanna try and make the rooms look as big as possible because it's easier to sell the house when you're making the house look bigger than it really is. So that's why I use wide angle lenses. Now, normally I'd use a 16 to 35 Canon lens, but the 1DX Mark II has a 1.35 crop factor when you're shooting in 4K. So to match that 16 millimeter effect on the full frame, I have a 12 millimeter times 1.35 equals about 16 millimeter. So it gives me that awesome 16 millimeter wide look that I like. Other things that I like shooting with the Liowa lens is like landscapes or, you know, action type stuff where I'm really tight in the action. So wide angles are super fun for me to use. Now, the reason I chose this lens over some of its competitors like the Sigma 12 to 24 or the Canon 11 to 24 is because this is a 2.8 lens, which means it's gonna do a lot better in low light versus some of those other ones are 4.0 aperture. And a lot of real estate, especially in basements, you're gonna have low light scenarios. So you're gonna have a super grainy image unless you have a 2.8 lens. So that's why I've chosen this lens over some of its competitors. Another reason is this one's only 900 bucks versus the Sigma's about twice as much at 1600 and the Canon 11 to 24 is about three times as much. So a lot less expensive than the other guys and it's gonna give you better performance on low light. All right, so we are using the Glidecam HD 4000 for all of these gliding moving shots. I like to add movement to everything I do, but especially to real estate videos because it makes it feel like you're going on a virtual tour and actually walking through the house. So that's kind of why I like to use a glide cam. This isn't the 4000 head though. This is the HD 4000 body with the Devon Graham uh, series head because I like the quick release plate built in to this head better. Um, so I just have a hybrid of the two. Um, some people ask me which glide cam I use and it's actually two glide cams mixed into one. As far as balancing this thing, Two to three seconds is kind of where I like it to be. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. So that's about two second drop time. So that should be pretty good. And I'm not getting audio. I just put this microphone on there to add more weight to the top so I wouldn't have to take weights off the bottom because this lens is super light. So this app is called Sun Scout and it allows me to check the trajectory of the sun to know when it's going to be where, when the sun's gonna set so I can kind of plan out my shoot. That's an awesome app. I think it's like 10 bucks for the Sun Scout app, but 
Lighting isn't great right now for these outdoor shots, but we're gonna grab a couple anyway. Glide up against this tree here. Get a couple variations. I'm filming a 4K at 60 frames, 125th shutter, ISO 400, which is native for this camera. And this lens is a manual lens. Looks like it's at about a 13 aperture. So those are our settings. Very nice. So they're gonna drive uh, one of their razors, a little four-wheeler, to kind of get an action shot showing the garage being used. Whenever I can, I try and incorporate as much movement and action. Sometimes they'll wanna drive their nice fancy car into their garage, but we don't have a fancy car with us, so we're just gonna use this guy. Oh yeah. So I'm actually gonna have him Open the, so the garage is opening during the shot. Is that okay? Okay. Tell me when. Okay. Let's do it from this side. So I'm choosing to shoot into the sun so I can get a little lens flare action here. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Zach. I'm gonna have you pull in one more time, actually. So just, yeah, just start right there and pull in pretty deep this time. Okay, go ahead. We are flying today the Phantom 4 Pro Plus. This is the one that comes with the built-in screen. Now I will recommend people who are flying drones professionally to buy extra batteries. I have four batteries and kind of this battery charging hub, which allows me to you know, charge multiple at a time. Now, as far as camera settings go, I'll probably shoot 4K at 60, and then we'll end up slowing that down. In post, white balance will probably set to about 5600, which is daylight. And then my color here, a lot of people will do you know, D-log and some of these flatter ones to preserve more dynamic range. I just push none on color, and then I come in here to style, and I create my own custom look. I bring the sharpness down one, because I think DJI sharpens their footage a little too much, so I bring the sharpness down one, and saturation up one. So that's the picture profile I use on here. And then settings, ISO as low as it goes, keeps the footage clean. Shutter speed will do double of our frame rate, which is uh, 1 20th, so shutter speed and then our aperture will just adjust according to our lighting. But on here we have Polar Pro polarizers. So these act as ND filters slash polarizers, so that just allows you to cut down on the light so you can keep your shutter speed lower, which will make it look a little more cinematic, plus it kind of brings out the blues in the sky and the greens in the trees, so polarizers are nice to have. So we're probably good to go. Bunch of mosquitoes up here eating me alive. So we're gonna do a pull out on this once we're starting in tight on the house. Now we're gonna pull away and rise up this at the same time. We'll probably speed ramp this in post. So we're going up moving up and tilting down. And so that's the effect you're seeing here. So this shot, I'm moving down and tilting up. Hopefully I don't crash into any trees over here. I'm just banking on those sensors telling me. <laughs> so now I'm gonna move right and pan left to give it a nice parallax move. Yeah, so usually those sensors will, once you get too close to something, they won't let you physically move it any farther. It was just like half foot too late on stopping me. <laughs> 
It's all green from all the leaves. No, it looks fine. I think he just cut up some leaves for us. We'll do one more battery and then start doing interior. Want to shoot up down this road, he said. Let's start down here a little ways. What's that? Yeah, we'll do our best. All right, let's head inside. No, this room's pretty dark, and a lot of you guys freak out when I do this, but I'm shooting at 1 60th of a shutter speed while also shooting at 60 frames per second. And you say, well, how can you do that? And uh, you can't, so don't. It just requires you to move smoother, move slower. As long as there's no fast moving objects, you really can't tell. And we are moving pretty dang slow right there, so I'd rather sacrifice a little bit of motion blur for a less grainy image. So that's at 1 60th. I'm now going to show you by going to 1 60th, I could stay at a 3200 ISO. Now we're going to go to 1 uh, 1 25th of a shutter speed and bump up to 6400 ISO. And tell me if you can tell the difference in motion blur. We'll try one tilt up here. I like to get a couple variations of shots just because sometimes in post I realize, oh, I liked that. Second one better, I'm glad I did it. All right, we are now shooting at 2800 Kelvin. These lights in here are super orange. In the bathroom. I'll do sometimes four or five takes just to make sure I nail the movement smoothly. We'll do one looking this way into the great room. Here we go. Walking through doorways always creates a nice transition uh, moving from one room to another, so I always try and use the doorways when I can. Create movement. That's a bad one. And I'll oftentimes speed ramp these in post. I also try and keep all my movements moving forward because that's the normal direction of someone walking. So this is where the wide angle lens shines is making tight spaces feel bigger than they really are. Because this is not a big bathroom, but throw on a wide angle lens. Makes it feel a little bigger. The nice thing about real estate shoots is that they're very low stress. You can do as many takes as you want. No pressure. All right, so this is kind of a tricky shot because the mirror is facing me. So, gotta get creative on this one. It's gonna come tucked into here. Try to get as far back as we can. Those aren't ideal shots. Another way to do it is just to get a little bit lower on these. That's a tough one. So again, I'm going 60th of a shutter speed so I can bring my ISO way down to like a thousand. Keeps my image cleaner. Good, shoot one from this way and then we're done. And you see that I'm always sandwiched up against all the walls to try and make 
all the rooms feel as big as possible. Good one coming in. All right, we're done. So that's pretty much it for shooting real estate videos. Hope you guys learned something new. If you have any further questions, leave them in the comments and... And I just wanna give you guys a quick look at my post-production process. I get asked a lot of questions about what I do in post with this footage once I've shot it. So I just wanna give you guys a few tips here. Now, one of the first questions I get asked is, do I use warp stabilizer? And the answer for a lot of these clips is no, because I shot them all at 60 frames. If you remember, slowed them down to 24. They're all on a 24 frame per second timeline here. So they're all slowed down and they look really smooth already. So I don't need to use warp stabilizer. Sometimes I will use it like on this clip, I use it I think at 1%, so hardly any at all but this is time remapped and then I use warp stabilizer just to kind of smooth that motion out just a little bit. Speaking of time remapping, that's something I love to do, especially on these kinds of edits, just to make it a little bit faster paced is I will actually speed up the clip towards the end. You see like on this instance, we are at normal speed and then I speed all the way up. This is where you do the time remaps right in here and I've sped it all the way up to a thousand percent and you see it speeds up and then the next clip, coming in is sped up and it comes down to normal speed. So it creates a cool transition going from slow to fast to fast to slow again, just like that. This transition was done just by a simple crossfade. And then color correction is another thing I get asked about. And a lot of these clips, again, don't have any color correction at all, as you can see here. I like to shoot straight out of camera for projects like this. It makes the, the workflow a lot quicker. Um, so I try and shoot the colors I like out of camera. And that's why I like using Canon is because they have terrific in-camera colors. If I do anything, it's usually just to brighten it up. So you see here I've applied a Lumetri color just to brighten it up just a tad, change the temperature and tint a little bit and give it a little RGB curve to bring up that exposure. But other than that, there's not a lot going on with the color correction. Now the drone shots aren't quite as good of color science, so you see a little bit more going on here. You see that we've adjusted um, the temperature tint again, brought in some contrast, a little bit of exposure, and then again, played with our RGB curve to uh, bring up that exposure. So that's pretty much all we're doing on these clips um, is exposure, adding a little bit of color and contrast. I go much further in depth in the course talking about my color correction process, but like I said, I like to shoot it in camera if I can. And here I have my song that I licensed from Audio Jungle. I use a few different websites for licensing music and to learn about where I find all my music, go check out my free webinar at fulltimefilmmaker.com. And down here you see some sound design, just some bird chirping, some ambient noise, just to kind of help the audience feel immersed. And again, here at the end, in the middle, I don't have any sound design, uh, not much sound to be had in some of these indoor shots. So uh, not a whole lot of sound design on this, but enough in the intro and outro to kind of bring it to life. So this edit really only took me maybe a day or two to throw together and then it's off to client and they loved it. So, so there you have it. There is a behind the scenes look at my timeline editing a real estate video. Again, I go fully in depth in the full-time filmmaker program, teaching you step-by-step step how to create these high quality edits for your clients so that you can continue to land high paying clients and land sponsorships. And speaking of sponsorships, this video is actually sponsored by Squarespace. They are an all-in-one website designing platform whom I have personally used love and would highly recommend especially to all of those of you who have no website building knowledge doesn't require any coding they have a ton of professional looking templates already built and they actually offer free trials so go start a free trial today at squarespace.com and if you end up liking it make sure to use the offer code parker to get 10 percent off your first purchase but that's it guys hope you enjoyed and learned something new about shooting real estate videos if you have any further questions, please let me know.